Oh. Oh. <laughs> you. You are wrong. I. He revealed his true form. The assassination is a lie, isn't it? The chief. Why did he have to pick you? This should not have happened. Whoa, who's that? Well played, Mr. Prosecutor. Okay. N -n Nightly. I'm speaking with the president now, thank you very much. Um, what you doing? You're a chess player. You know knights always strive to protect their king. So shut up now. Are are you threatening me, Mr. Knightley? Ah, what's with this guy? Oops, sorry, went over the top there. But on to business. As my first move, I want to ask you a question. You say I fired a gun on the stage, right? Stage left, actually. Then I should have been caught. The entire audience was watching me. I see. Now it's my move. You used a certain object to prevent the spectators from seeing you. I'm a little confused still uh, as to where the bullet that killed Rook came from. Oh, he didn't get shot until he was on the plane, perhaps. Certain certain object. What did Knightley use to prevent the audience from seeing him? That would be... Ooh. Getting some frame rate problems. Or is, this a, is this actually a, a remix? What's going on? It sounds funny. Whatever. Right here. Yep. I believe you used this. Am I getting close? Oh, whoops. We had we had the case as a, an extra piece of evidence. My bad. Okay, so we p present the case first. Then it'll ask. Oh yeah, prove I used that, and then we'll, pre we'll present the case, the picture. Kablam. The Attache case. The Attache case. Exactly. I'd like you to have a look at this photo Kate took. Oh, it's gonna do it for us. Your right hand is completely hidden behind by the by the case. This photo captures the exact moment you secretly fired the gun. You used the attached case as a screen. You seem to enjoy making up convenient stories, Mr. Prosecutor. But you've missed something. What have I missed? That everything you said is just a hypothesis, a theory. Flags flapping in the wind, using the case as a screen. Security plans were modified because I can't move my neck. You've got no decisive evidence. Hmm. Yeah, it'd be great if you had the bullet hit the, hit the balloon. Then you could examine it and see if the ballistic markings match my gun. But that bullet's probably at the bottom of the lake. Finding it would be real tough, right? You're tempting fate, buddy. I hate to admit it, but it's as he says. There's no decisive evidence. If there's no proof, the only thing you can do is shut up. So do so. Hold it. Whoa, the music's, music's going nuts. Miss Swift. Ah, uh, um... That's it. If she speaks, I could hear new testimony. Hey, lady, you got something to say? Ah, uh, uh, never mind. There we go. I thought so. Jeez, dude, put the gun away. Nicole. Don't be afraid. The truth will escape if you let that man intim intimidate you. You're a reporter. A journalist, are you not? I, I, I will not remain silent. You'd better consider your position. Use your head before saying something you'll regret. I forgot the number one rule of journalism. Journalists must not tell lies. You can't call it a scoop if it ain't the truth. Mr. Edgeworth, I'm sorry. I've been hiding this the whole time. This is? I used this laser pointer to aim at the president. That's all I did. I never fired the gun. You stupid woman! If you testify, you'll be admitting you're an accomplice. I I don't care. I'm gonna tell him everything. 
Three days ago, I was covering an event at, at the Zhangfa Embassy, and some of the president's men called me over. He said if I cooperated, I'd get an exclusive interview with the pro president. This random reporter. Hey, will you help us with this uh, staged assassination attempt? And the gun in the trash? I really don't know. All I was told was to come wearing a red hood and to aim the laser pointer. I never thought it would snowball into all of this. I'm really truly sorry. Why did they need the red hood exactly? Did they have the killer on their side? I, I thought he was a, a third party in this. Nicole, thank you. That was a testimony worthy of the courtroom. This is sufficient testimony to verify the fake assassination plot. I guess, I guess for who the, who the bodyguards should look for. <clears throat> Damn you, the lot of you. You're all a bunch of mindless morons. It's a shame. If only you had been able to been able to usurp the investigation as planned. You would have been able to silence this young lady. Blast! Oh, jeez. Um, so tomorrow's headlines now read... Fake assassination plan exposed becomes a murder. Right? I can't believe that you'd do something this horrible, pal. I admit nothing. Hold it. Hold it. The president. Nightly, that's enough. We have no choice but to admit it. So, Mr. President, you admit that you planned a fake assassination? Yes, I admit it. I'm sorry. But why? Why did you have to do this? My approval ratings in Shang Fa have fallen. I wanted to appeal to them as a strong president who survived an assassination. But in the end, I was just, it was just a lie. A stupid lie. And the bullet in the bulletproof vest. The bullet in the bulletproof vest? Prepared earlier. It was not fired today. Still getting evidence. Goodness gracious. This is a heck of a first case. But what about the killer? It seems our plan was leaked. Someone wanted to make this face fake assassination real. That's why the killer wore the red raincoat. He would impersonate the culprit from the plan in order to approach the president. But there's still one thing I don't understand. What's that? Why did Rook die? His death was not part of this charade, and yet it really happened. Yes. Why was his life taken? Ethan was an outstanding bodyguard. Even though he wasn't from my country, he had my utmost trust. I wouldn't think that having the trust of a cowardly president meant, mu meant that much, honestly. Hey, that's the same sort of bond between me and Mr. Edgeworth, pal. You're not cowardly. I wouldn't put it that way. Did Rook know of your plan? Not the exact details. I asked him to cooperate and he refused. You should have listened to his advice. Yes, indeed. You, I wouldn't have done all this if I had known. You're being too dramatic. What? Rook was just one piece of the president's defense. Nightly. That's... It's not as if he cooperated with your plan. I did. He ran away, taking whatever dignity he had left, left with him. Good riddance. I know you're a valuable bodyguard, but still... I don't have time for this, sir. I'm the team leader now. There's going to be a lot of changes now that the chicken's gone. After all, adaptation is the most important principle in chess. I knew you always wanted to be the team leader. But... Isn't this a bit in, impru, imprudent? Impudent. No R. Is there? That's not a word. Imprudent? Hey, hey, hey. I will orchestrate even more perfect plans just like this one. You definitely have ambition. But wasn't your perfect plan today a failure? If it weren't for you and that idiot Rook, it would have been perfect. What did Rook do? If he hadn't died... The killer wouldn't have threatened me. And you would have never set foot in this plane. Knightley, how can you say such a thing? Yeah, he died trying to save you, Mr. President. Maybe he fulfilled his lifelong ambition. 
He died protecting the president? Huh? But the assassination was fake, right? Of course it was. You need to listen closer, little girl. Remember the guy who wanted to make the fake assassination real? There were two gunshots at the time of the incident. First was as he said, I shot the balloon. But the second one wasn't me. So who fired the second shot? The real assassin. But it wasn't the killer. He intended to attack the president with a knife, not a gun. The lucky winner was the hidden queen. Or should I say, the lady in the overcoat in the coat over there. Eh? This is going back and forth a little a little quick. A little quick and a little too too often for my liking. You're accusing Nicole, pal? Again? I ain't no assassin. Really? I don't believe you. The gun that was left in the trash? That was yours, right? At least testimony. Shot the balloon and entered the plane with Rook and the President. Rook waited in the cabin while I led the president into the security room. Waiting in the cabin. Hang on, let me parse that. All right, got it. When I came out, when I came out, Rook was already on the ground. The bullet that lady fired must have hit him while he was while we escorted the president to the plane. The shot was fired from the gun you found in the trash. So you're saying you don't know exactly when the victim was shot? Nice job isn't a nice job isn't to protect the rook. It's to protect the king. Huh? What he's trying to say is that his job was to protect the president only. It's over if you lose the king. Checkmate. That's the first rule of chess. If you let your pieces get taken right in front of you, you're not likely to win. But I did win. Look, the president is safe. Hmph. <laughs> Don't claim victory when the game has only just begun. All right. Shot the balloon and entered the plane. Press. So the victim had no part in your plan? Yeah, that's right. He didn't even know it was all fake. So you're saying he thought it was a real assassination attempt? Ah, but you fired the gun right next to him. Wouldn't he have noticed? Maybe he did. Maybe he did. Not that it matters now. Besides, even if he thought the assassination attempt was fake, his duty was to protect the king. He made a split-second decision to sacrifice himself. The victim was truly a man of honor. You're wrong. It was all part of my plan. He simply assisted in our little performance on stage. Waited in the cabin while he led the president into the security room. Is that perhaps recorded on those uh, computers back there? Why did you do that? The assassination was supposed to be fake. There were a lot of guests milling around outside. Yeah, outside, they wouldn't be looking inside the plane, would they? Wouldn't it be bad if the president, who had just escaped an, an assassination, was seen lounging around and drinking grape juice? Imagine the headlines. What was the victim doing at that time? How should I know? He was with the president inside the security room. Anyway. He came out, Rick was already on the ground. Where did you find the body? About where he is now. He collapsed in the middle of this room. When I returned, the, the door to the plane was already closed. The bullet must have hit Rook right before the door closed. Uh, talk about a hassle. It's all his fault this, this plan failed. Nightly, that's too far. Even if you protected the king, you couldn't protect his honor. He was careless in his duty, and he paid the price for it. This man is truly despicable. As I was saying. The bullet that lady fired must have hit him while we escorted the president to the plane. I find that hard to believe. Weren't you both carrying bulletproof attache cases? Yeah. When Rook noticed the laser pointer, we opened up those bad boys and became the president's shield. You're telling me the bullet slipped through the space between your shields? Are you claiming that Miss Swift has such precise aim? Well, she was targeting the president. I wouldn't say her aim is precise at all. Uh, 
So the bullet just was off target, and just happened to hit the victim instead. So the tiny gap between his bulletproof vest and case. I don't want to believe it either. But they say the truth is stranger than fiction. Rick was hit by a one in a million shot, and you have the evidence to prove it. Shot was fired from the gun you found in the trash. That seems true enough. Uh, ooh, nope. No, it doesn't. So the second shot wasn't part of your plan, because... Well, no. Well, two shots were fired from the same gun. You only know of one. So the second shot wasn't, wasn't part of your plan. That's right. She did that on her own. If you think about it. Wasn't she desperate for a scoop? I'm a journalist. I ain't no murderer. Well then, who was the one who joined the plan in order to get an exclusive coverage? Uh, that's... It's just like you said. I orchestrated this fake assassination attempt. She was only supposed to aim laser pointer. Guess it wasn't enough for her. She prepared her own gun and took aim at the president. Eh, no. She probably thought she would, wouldn't get caught if she went on and shot me too. Could you add that to your testimony, please? Knightley fired the first shot and then Miss Swift fired the second one. In other words, Nicole also had a gun. I never thought she was the type. Without any proof, it's just pure speculation. That kind of gun... It, well, oh, we don't have that as evidence, so do we? We got that, that bit of logic that said um, this kind of gun is prohibited or banned outright, I don't remember, in this country. So a journalist should not have one. Bam, let's present some evidence. Let's. Okay, so I think... Shot was fired from the gun you found in the trash. Um, two shots have been fired. I think we go with that. Yep. Objection. So you shot the balloon and Miss Swift shot Rook. Is that really true? Can't see it any other way. The gun we discovered in the trash was fired twice. The number of gunshots don't add up. Kablam! Why don't the gunshots add up? It's simple. This gun is fake evidence left behind by the real criminal. Take evidence. Think about it. The criminal planted this for a reason. By finding the gun, we'd assume that the assassin was in the audience. In order to make us believe that the gun was used by the assassin. The gun needed to appear as if it had been fired twice. I get it, because two shots were fired during the incident. However, we proved that the bullet that hit the balloon did not come from this gun. Therefore, I have my doubts as to whether this gun also took Rook's, Rook's life. Hey, hey, hey. Here it comes. You're packing some serious heat. Enough with the song and dance. If you come this far, go ahead and say it. I won't just say it, I'll prove it. The one who really shot Rook is... You! Horace Knightley! Horace Knightley, you murdered Rook. Hey, you finally said it. Knightley, you couldn't have. The killer wasn't the only... Sorry. The killer wasn't the only one who took advantage of the fake assassination plot. You intended to murder Rook and claim that he was the victim of the assassination. Once the president had entered the security room and the door to the plane was closed, only the victim and, the, and Knightley would have, would have been left in this room. And at that moment, you fired a third bullet directly at Rook. A third bullet? Ha! Only two gunshots were heard. The numbers don't don't match up. The plane's walls are soundproof. So, prove it, Edgeworth. How do you know that? The door was closed. The gunshot would not have been heard outside. But wasn't the president in the next room? That's true. The president may have heard the gunshot. Mr. President, did you hear a gunshot? I... I didn't hear any gunshots. But, weren't you watching this room through the security cameras? The cameras in this room aren't, I, aren't usually turned on. I turned on the power after I entered the security room. So you didn't turn on the power immediately after entering the room? No. Actually, I... I... What is it? It's not being clear. Mr. President, focus. This is vital. 
I, I, I was, that is, I... Please! I was hiding under the bed and covering my ears. Why? You knew the assassination was fake! It doesn't matter, I simply hate the sound of guns. A terrifying sound, I just can't help it. That definitely ain't going in my article. Ahem. Nightly, you saw the president hiding under the bed. Furthermore, you could tell if the security cameras had been turned on by looking at the, at the monitors. In that moment, when the president wouldn't hear the gunshot or see the room, you had a chance to fire a third bullet at Rook. Nightly, did you really... you deceive me? You really think I killed that moron? That's cold, Mr. President. Have a little faith in me. Bodyguard who's risking his life to protect you. I want to believe you. I really do, but... I just don't get it. Why are you suspecting me alone? There's still the possibility that she's the killer. This gun is not the murder weapon. The number of missing bullets makes that clear. Hang on. Why? Why? We only established that um, Nicole shot once, didn't we? Or didn't shoot at all? Uh, man, I'm getting confused again. Does it say anything in here now? New? Two shots, same model as the victims? Oh boy. Maybe there's one short to begin with. Everything of that? What? Oh, I getcha. Maybe he'd already fired a shot yesterday on the, or the day before. And the second shot was fired today. The one that hit Rook. Well, isn't that just the perfect excuse? Excuse? Possibility exists. You can't deny that. He's right. You can't deny it completely. You need decisive evidence. Evidence so decisive that it makes my heart stop and my logic crumble. You got something like that? Gah! Mr. Edgeworth, can, can't you do anything? At this rate, Nicole will... Mr. Prosecutor, it's true, I did an awful thing for a scoop. But I never killed nobody. I can never do a thing like that. Decisive evidence. If I could prove the murder weapon was Knightley's gun... Proof it was his gun? Yeah, it'd be great if you had a, the bullet that hit the balloon. Then you can examine it and see if the ballistic markings match my, my gun. We can find the bullet that took Rook's life. Gumshoe, get to it. You can determine which gun fired the shot from the ballistic markings. If you've got no evidence, then we're done talking. Hold it. You, you, no, Edgeworth, you said objection. What? You don't seriously have decisive evidence. Hmph. <laughs> Naturally. That's a big joke. Well, come on now, show us. What is this so-called evidence? The bullet that took Rook's life. That's the decisive evidence I need. This evidence. Do I have it? I think... I just do. I have the bullet. Right. Um, here. Somewhere. Okay, I don't. The canary doesn't sing. The canary doesn't sing, just shoot it. So the saying goes. Just as I hoped. I'm gonna blast a hole in you. Right in your chest. No. Okay. Rick was killed here, so where did the bullet go? Come to think of it, there's one thing in this room that's always felt out of place. Bullet that took. Yep, yep. I apparently do not have it. I don't have it. Okay, okay, it's game over, man. However, it is somewhere in this room. What? The bullet that killed Rook pierced through his body. So where did the bullet go? Earlier you explained it like this. The bullet that took Rook's life pierced through his body and then hit the vest. That's right. It would be dangerous if he hadn't worn that bulletproof vest. However, now that the fake assassination plan has come to light, we know that the bullet in the bulletproof vest was prepared earlier. 
So then, where did the bullet go? Interesting. Very interesting. You have the answer? Do I have evidence that shows the location of the bullet that killed Mr. Rook? Goodness gracious. Yeah, I think I am actually getting a little slowdown this time around. Um... I think it's got to be in here. What is... Yeah, I think it's this. In this room, there is one thing that's clearly missing. Something missing? Sure it's not your brain? I'd like you to take a look at the rack of security monitors. Oh. It seems you've noticed, Mr. President. Among these images of the plane's surroundings, only the feed from the right side of the plane is absent. Oh, I did not notice that. That's what's missing. A single monitor. Um. Mr. President, there was originally a monitor here, wasn't there? That's right. Why is there a stuffed toy now? That must have been put there to hide the empty space where the monitor used to be. Why is the monitor missing, and where did it go? Why? Undoubtedly because it was hit by the bullet. In order to make us think that the bullet really hit the bulletproof vest, it would be a problem if another bullet hole was discovered. So then where did the monitor go? Where? It should be hidden somewhere inside this plane. There hasn't been a chance to dispose of it outside since it was shot. Detective Gumshoe, search this plane. Roger that, sir. President Huang, you said extraterritorial laws apply, on, apply to this plane. Uh, I will allow it. There is no problem. I just want to know the truth of Rook's death. Damn it, you think this is a joke? You're always like this. Rook this, Rook that. Detective. We have his approval. Go ahead. Mr. Edgeworth, I found it, sir. Good work, detectives. Now let's extract the bullet from the monitor. Hmm. If I do this here and then do that... I got it! Well, it's definitely stained with blood. I'm certain this is the bullet that killed Rook. Killed Rook. Sweet. This is the bullet that will crush your arguments. The decisive evidence that blows a hole in your logic. So the ballistic markings on this bullet do not match the gun found in the audience area. Miss Swift will be cleared of suspicion. What's wrong? Cat got your tongue? Detective, we need to examine the ballistic markings. Send the gun and bullet to forensics. Roger, you should be able to find clear markings on this bullet, sir. 